Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. January 15, 2021, the Toyota Spanked Edition. And we start with that lead story from the Wall Street Journal as Toyota has agreed to pay $180 million to settle complaints over its delayed emissions defect reports. The carmaker had agreed to settle a DOJ complaint that it violated reporting requirements under the EPA's Clean Air Act for about a decade. The DOJ complaint alleged several Toyota entities violated the requirements for reporting emissions-related defects in automobiles from 2005 to 2015. The department estimated uh, an, a, a uh, defect information report uh, that were not filed of some $78 million. So that's uh, a lot of reports. And uh, Toyota didn't file 20 voluntar- voluntary emissions recall reports in over 200 quarterly reports that are supposed to be updated to the uh, EPA. That's 78, not 78 million, sorry. So um, this is Toyota's biggest civil penalty ever tied to emissions reporting requirements under the FCPA. Uh, Also from uh, the Wall Street Journal, the NDAA, or the National Defense Authorization Act, expands the scope of foreign bank records U.S. authorities can obtain. Um, the a provision in the NDAA allows the U.S. Treasury Secretary or Attorney General to subpoena records related to any account at a foreign bank with corresponding accounts in the U.S. The law applies to records held in the U.S. or abroad or that are subject to federal criminal investigations or civil forfeiture. Previously, the U.S. government's authority was limited to records related to correspondent banks, including those related to the deposit of funds into a foreign bank. That provision, while a major step towards revamping safeguards in the correspondent banking system, may increase risks and challenges for the foreign institution with accounts in the U.S. Foreign banks maintain accounts at U.S. banks to access the U.S. financial system. It only seems right that they be required to report. These accounts allow access to services and products that may not be available in their home jurisdictions, obviously part of the anti-AML push. In a uh, uh, ruling or an update that is, is going to uh, be hearty for every traveler, the FAA has uh, cracks down on unruly airline passengers ahead of the inauguration. This is obviously targeted at the uh, insanity we saw from Trump supporters who basically took over planes and not wear a mask, abused stewardesses and other flight attendants and disrupted flights. And so the airlines and FAA are stepping up efforts to address violence and disruption on flights uh, and at airports ahead of next week's inauguration, citing a rise of threatening and aggressive behavior, once again, largely by Trump supporters, uh, because who else would fly up to uh, uh, do an insurrection? Pretty crazy. Under a a Wednesday order from its chief, Steve Dixon, the FAA plans to take legal action against any passengers who assault threaten or intimidate or interfere with an airline crew, which could include fines up to $35 million and referral for criminal prosecutions. The agency had previously uh, had the authority to impose fines and refer people to prosecution, but intended to issue warnings. Dixon said flying is the safest, safest mode of transportation, and he wants to keep it that way. And uh, in an article, our final article comes from the Washington Post, and it is how the pandemic has changed entertainment forever. Every compliance practitioner should read this as it talks about how you can have an enhanced experience, even if you're watching and streaming with chat rooms. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.